everybody. Welcome to T-Post Corner. This is your host, Travis. And uh, what day are we on? Oh, man, I think we are on day 11 of Evergreen Month. Uh, it's where we focus on a keyword mechanic as defined by Wizards of the Coast. And today's subject is Flash. So the title of my deck is I'll Flash You. And uh, it's not as dirty as it sounds. But uh, we tried to put together a deck that focuses on the Flash mechanic. If you're new, Flash means you can cast this, the spell with Flash anytime you can cast an instant. So we talk a lot in Magic about instant speed and sorcery speed because sorceries you can normally only cast on your turn. Instants you can cast on your turn or your enemy's turn. So Flash can be a, a really good surprise card uh, because like, for example, if I'm going to put down a creature and I'm going to attack you, if you've got zero creatures out, I think the way is clear for me to attack. But if you've got a creature with Flash, that means you can wait. Normally, if you had... Um, say a 3-3 creature and I had a 3-3 creature I would know he's there, I would see him, I would calculate do I want to trade or do I want to not just pass and keep what I've got and if I go ahead and commit to the attack then you pretty much figure out that I'm willing to trade or maybe I've got to trick up my sleeve to increase my 3-3, make him stronger temporarily and kill yours but if you don't have anything there then I'm basically thinking yeah, you know what's the penalty if I attack but if you've got a 4-4 creature who you can bring down as a flash, you can wait until I hit the attack button, and then you flash in your creature, and then you can block and I'm dead all of a sudden. So doing things like that, or maybe just saving your mana, a blue does this a lot with the opt cards and other little cantrips with their instance, is just, just wait till the very end and do something, because you're waiting to react to your opponent. You want to keep your ammo ready in terms of your mystical energy, right? Your mana. And... Maybe I have a counter spell, whatever. Blue does that a lot. If you don't do anything and I don't need to counter you, then I have other instants and I can use those as well. So Flash really, uh, Flash really helps out with that a lot, actually. So let's go through the deck and then we'll take it out for a spin. Let's do the overview. 31 creatures were creature heavy, a little bit. 24 lands, it's pretty normal. Um, mostly black and blue spells and average 3.1 to get out lots of two and three drops we've got so tiny to enchant another creature get rid of uh, two of its power if uh, the controller has seven or more cards in the great graveyard it's minus six instead one mutual destruction so i get rid of a creature to get rid of one of yours two thieves enforcers uh, if you've played rogue decks at all if you've played them or played against them this is a familiar card to you uh, flash it in and every time uh, any kind of creature that has the rogue template on it comes down uh, your opponent will mill two cards starlet mantle is creature protection uh, you can flash it in on a creature they get plus one plus one for the duration the enchantment stays on there they also get hex proof until the end of the turn so it's basically to prevent uh, the enemy from getting rid of your favorite creature black lance paragon uh, i use this uh, in a couple other decks too he's a, he's a good defender for one turn uh, when he enters the battlefield, if you have other knights, it doesn't have to be this knight, but you can target who gains death touch and lifelink until the end of the turn. A lot of times this is the only creature on the board, so it automatically goes on to him. Four copies of Cunning Knight Bonder. Uh, this is kind of uh, just in case I run into a blue deck, because I do run into blue a lot. But spells with flashy cost, cast costs one less to cast, and they can't be countered. Uh, so that makes most of my deck counterspell proof if I can get one of these on the board and keep them there. Soaring Thought, Thought Thief. I had to say that three times fast. Uh, four copies of this card. This isn't a mill deck necessarily, but uh, there's the very common with the, the blue black rogue deck that's in vogue. Uh, a lot of those creatures do happen to have flash, so it's kind of hard to ignore those when they're around especially for demonstration purposes when we want to just say, hey, we've got flash creatures, let's get some of the best flash creatures out. Um, well, this contributes to the mill, if uh, you haven't seen it before. Uh, when one or more rogues attack, each opponent mills two cards. Brazen Borrower, they've got the Petty Theft instant ability for the adventure where you can send a target permanent back into its owner's hand, uh, or you can bring them out as a flash ability to put them on the battlefield right away. They can only block creatures with flying. C Dasher Octopus, this is a good uh, mutate card as well, so you can mutate it over or under. So if you've got a 1 1 creature, you can mutate over and make it a 2 2 creature. If you've got a 4 4 creature, you can put it under and keep your 4 4 power and toughness. But uh, whenever the creature that, uh, whether you, you just have Octopus down on the battlefield by itself and it's attacking and hits, or if it's become part of another creature with the mutate, if it deals combat damage to a player, you get to draw an extra card. 
Liliana Standard Bearer. This is uh, good to keep and wait in case you lose some creatures. Uh, you wait until after they die, then you bring it down to the battlefield and you get to draw extra cards depending on how many creatures under your control died this turn. Minions Return. As a flash, you can enchant a creature. When it dies, return that card to the battlefield under your control. So it's, uh, it's a little expensive, but it's worth it, I think. Uh, I only have one copy in this deck, but it costs three. And uh, if you're about to lose a creature and you really want to bring it back, this can be a nice little surprise to them. This is a card you don't normally see in the rogue decks, but it is a rogue, so it will, it will work uh, with Thieves Guild Enforcer and with the Soaring Thought Thief. Okay, um, You bring her in, she's got flying, and when she enters the battlefield, target opponent mills two cards. So if you bring her in while well, we already got Thieves Guild Enforcer, you're going to have four cards milled instead of two due to each of their attributes. Two copies of Slither Wisp. Whenever you cast another spell that has flash, you draw a card and each opponent loses one life. A little bit of card draw advantage there. Uh, one uh, flash for Capture Sphere to tap a creature that's just about to overpower you or whatever. Moving on down, one Crustacean, which is a 1-6 Crab. I've seen this guy maybe once used in other decks, but I thought I'd try him out here. One Dirge Bat, this is also a mutate creature. If you do mutate him onto another, you can destroy target creature or planeswalk on opponent controls. Two copies, Jarl of the Forsaken. This is Foretell, so you can uh, put them to the side and cast them cheaper later. But uh, if, if you manage to damage a target creature or planeswalker, you can then bring down Jarl, and that creature becomes completely destroyed. One Lurking Deadeye. This is sort of the original Human Assassin version. This is the Jarl is the Kaldheim one that came out with Foretell. Lurking Deadeye doesn't have uh, Foretell, but uh, was uh, sort of the, the original card, right? This is a 3-2 for Jarl. Lurking Deadeye is a 4-2. Same deal. If you've done any damage to a creature, um, you bring Lurking Deadeye in and it destroys. The other major difference is Jarl includes the creature or planeswalker terminology, whereas Lurking Deadeye is only good against creatures. Um, maybe you could argue that it's better to have Jarl down instead of Lurking Deadeye, but I just wanted to sort of combine, you know, this is from the, the uh, Ikoria expansion. This is from Kaldheim. There are similar type cars that do similar type things with minor variations. Uh, this one is probably better, but I just wanted to uh, sort of highlight the differences in, in the variety in these kind of decks. One copy of Pouncing Shore Shark also has Mutate. Whenever the creature mutates, you can return target creature to its owner's hand. Voracious Great Shark, where you put down a shark and you counter a target artifact or creature spell. Uh, two copies of Zarazan the Trickster. Uh, he's a Flash 4-4. Four, four. Um, Sometimes I get him mixed up and think he has flying, but here it looks like he's swimming underground. Uh, he's got uh, two abilities. One is whenever he does combat damage to a player, you get to go into his graveyard and take a permanent card from there and stick it onto the battlefield under your control. So you get to take your opponent's stuff. The other thing, if you, if you have a rogue that's already attacking and that rogue is not blocked, you, and you have Zareth in your hand, you can, or actually if he's already on the battlefield and you didn't attack with him, you could spend four mana, return the unblocked attacking row that you control back to your hand, then you put Zareth in his place, tapped in attacking, and then of course that's the idea, you've got an unblocked Zareth who can then go in raid the graveyard. So very powerful card. Uh, Blitz Leech, this, this is a, uh, you usually see the other kind of uh, worm that, that does negative two, negative two to every creature. But this one has flash. It, it still costs six, but it's only one black mana. It's a 5-2 creature. When you flash it in, you choose a target creature and opponent controls, and they get minus two, minus two till the end of the turn. Plus, you remove all counters from that creature. So that can be good against the pumped up creatures that we come across with the clerics and the, the flying vampires and stuff like that. Just extremely targeted instead of uh, wiping the whole board. But uh, it has flash, so it can be a nice surprise. Lockmere Serpent, this is from the Mutate deck again. Uh, this is where it's, it's usually in the Mutate deck anyway. 7-7. Uh, seven, seven. Uh, now imagine that uh, your, your opponent's turn is just about to end. You haven't done anything with your mana for a turn. And, uh, you know, he's maybe wiped the whole board and there's nothing on the field. And then you use 6 mana to flash this guy in at the end of his turn. That means that summoning sickness is over when your turn starts and you can attack with a 7-7 seven, seven Serpent. He's got a number of different abilities that are down here. You can sacrifice an island and he can't be blocked. You can sacrifice a swamp where you gain one life and draw a card. And when he's in the graveyard, uh, you can uh, X off five cards from your opponent's graveyard instead of your own to return the serpent 
from the graveyard to your hand. It's not instant speed, though. That part is only activated as a sorcery. The rest is lands. We've got four copies of Clearwater Pathway. I don't have all, um, all four of all pathways yet, but I do for this one. One Temple on Deceit to get me a scry, and one Fabled Passage if I need it. And that's the deck. If you like any part of this video, please click like and or subscribe. In the meantime, we're going to take this deck out for a spin. Alright, we have both color lands and three copies of them. Three different... Oh, that's a 190-something-odd deck. Let's go ahead and chip away at that, shall we? Oh, is that a pest deck? That looks like a pest deck. There's more pests in there than usual. I don't think we're going to be able to mill all that. That's not really the point of our deck. We get to mill two more cards because he's a rogue. Maybe we'll give our opponent some land problems. And because we get to attack with a rogue, we get to mill two more cards. And there go two more lands. Four lands down, will that give my opponent a headache? Or did I just help them out because they already have plenty of lands and they need spells? You never know. You just have to hope. Okay, let's see. I don't want to do Fabled yet because it'll be tapped. And what I'd rather do is get Slither with on the ground. And I made a mistake already. Although I did get rid of a couple of creatures. I didn't really want to get rid of the Guild Enforcer right then. But that prevents it from being sacrificed for use. Oh, you know what? Never mind. I kept it, right? Because as soon as we milled the cards with Soaring Thought Thief, it met the other requirement here. And suddenly there were eight or more cards in the opponent's graveyard and Thilled Geef Enforcer beefed up from a 1-1 to a 4-2. Uh, remember also that 4, it was a 3-2 normally, right? This is what it normally is. It gets plus 2, plus 1, turns into a 3-2. Right, but then here, rogues you control get plus one. So these guys cooperate pretty well. So that was actually a mistake because I wasn't thinking about that, but it makes me look really smart, to my opponent at least. I'm going to keep Dirge Bat in reserve. I don't think they can flash anything in for one. So here, they have no blockers. We do the mill. Good, I hate I love this card, Cosmos Elixir, but I hate playing against it. That's a, makes it a pain. Okay, you see that Zareth became highlighted now because we can put him in here. So we're going to use his ability. We're gonna return Um does it matter? We'll return this one. Unblocked Zareth. We now get to go through his graveyard and pick something we like. And I like Nighthawk Scavenger. Take action. Ta-da! 7 3 5 left to end Death Touch, and the opponent scoops. And that can be the nice little surprise that is a flash deck. Honestly, that first battle was probably as good as it's ever going to get. It's probably all downhill from here, so I should probably just quit. Just take my win and go home. So, does the deck know that... Does the deck know that I got rogues in here, so it's putting me against a rogue deck already? It just needs that one turn calibration? Look at that. Got rid of my Thieves Guild Enforcer. And we're back to playing poker. And 
whenever you're done, I would like to get a turn someday. Okay, for this turn, I will get to put down a land. Woo! Exciting. I probably, this is probably a lesson to me on I should have mulliganed because there were all these expensive cards and I didn't have the land at the time. And there, was, there was no turn one play or no turn two play. There's really no turn three play and that usually means death against a rogue deck. <coughs> Even flashing of that as a blocker will do me no good. Minions return does me no good. Might have to give up Zero just to stay alive. But then he might have a counter. So what do I do? I do nothing. These are all flash, so I can wait. Wait and see what they do. They're gonna mill me more? Okay, doing it this way, bringing Nightbonder in successfully makes minions return affordable, so maybe I can use her twice. Uh, nope, not even that. They had just enough mana and just the right spell. So, that's what going up against a rogue deck is like a lot of the times, but again, that was probably my fault because I didn't mulligan, and I really should have. So you've already seen the deck at its best and its worst. We'll try and show you a few more of the cards. Get some more play in here. Sometimes when you lose it's interesting, sometimes it's not. I'm always trying to keep in mind the idea that this might be somebody's first time uh, watching the gameplay, maybe new to the game. Uh, you know, there's some basic lessons that we should know better who have been playing for a while. Now here's one where I'm going to wait. I can attack with the Cunning Nightbonder now. And I don't expect that to be blocked. And then if they want to attack me, I can block this one. Or, since you're going to do two, I'm just going to toss you back with Brazen Borrower. Ta-da! Okay, I don't think I can mutate, can I? No, because it needs to be a creature, not a human. So, we'll go ahead and bring this down now, because they know we have it. I'm just get in two quick points and we're done. Yeah, so for anybody new, um, keep watching me to see mulligan mistakes, because I hate to mulligan, because half the time I'll mulligan, and uh, I, get a worse I get a worse draw, and I don't like that. So I tend to make do with what I have for the most part, but sometimes it's, it's really obvious that I should take a mulligan. And I, I don't want to have this entire channel filled of games with only me winning, because that would lead you to the wrong conclusion, because I probably lose about half the time. Okay, can I mutate the Brazen Borrower? Yes, I can, and he's unblocked right now. So three, six... Yeah, he just needs one more land to bring him down. Let's go ahead and mutate. We'll keep the three, one. Extra point of damage. And we'll bring in our Soaring Thought. And we'll attack with just 
is the guy that's going to get me an extra card and mill him to the And now we've got some options. Are you going to bring down your 6-6 six, six, so it'll turn into a 7-7? Seven, because seven, I can sort of control that a little bit. Ah, oh, interesting. Hey, Marcus. Uh, you know what? Um, we're going to get rid of somebody. Let's get rid of you, and we'll sacrifice you. It's an easy way to get rid of a 5-5 five, five blocker. Andy scoops! All right. Well, I'm either winning gloriously or I'm losing miserably, but it's all fun any which way it goes. Okay, that looks like it's worth keeping. A couple of expensive cards, but... Yeah, we'll scry first. We'll take the land. We are going to need some more land. Sometimes I like to, to wait till later to do the scrying, but I wanted to put Nightbonder out on turn two. Hopefully she doesn't get pacified right away. We can get a couple of shots in. see second spell gains menace in a plus one counter so we will attack because if they do cast two spells somehow it does no good to have night bonner sitting there we need two people to block and their deck is already looking like it's gonna be irritating go back up. Okay, we still don't have enough to do what I want. So they're going to buff up the Aspirant or they're going to bring down their creature again. Bring down the creature. We'll let you do that. going to cast a second spell and buff him up right away. It doesn't matter because I think I'm going to use... Uh-oh. What do we got going on here? Oh, no. I was going to use Blitz Leech, but I don't have a way to stop them if they take it away. Yep, they saw it. They don't have a creature. It needs me a creature. Okay, we'll find it. There we go. That gives me a creature. Blocking. And they're probably going to buff up their aspirant. Or both of them. No blocks. We're taking it. They're on top out at least, which is good. Alright, we will mutate over you. We'll destroy you. And... I guess we have to stay and block. Our health is just too low. We can't take too many more hits. 
if he does a landfall and manages to cast a second spell, he's going to become 6-6, six, six, which means I'll have to use Starlight Mantle. I'll still lose everything. Plus one for that. Um, why can't I block? Why can't I? Oh, shoot, I forgot about that. Even though it's a dirge bat overhead, we've still got the, the fairy underneath, and it's a limit. You can only block flyers. So, we're even more complicated than before now. Complicated for us, that is. They're not having a problem. We should just buff everybody up. And I think I'm dead no matter what now. Uh, let's see, pass to blockers. We'll block you. We'll block you. We'll block you. And that's it. I'll just quit. Disgusting. Okay, only one land. I can cast two spells, but we're going to say that I learned from uh, my last experience already. We got two lands at least. And what do we keep? I guess we get rid of the, the Lockmere Serpent for now. Keep all the stuff that we're close to being able to cast. Yeah, 50 50 track record with this so far. Let's hope this is the tiebreaker. Okay. This is one of the times where I want to wait and use flash. They could have removal from black. They could have damage spells. Waiting to see if they do anything with their mana so that I can maybe. They were ready for that. Okay, so how about we remove the suspense and just take care of things now? Okay, we got rid of another removal and their outrider, which could have made things awkward this early in the game. They are ready for us each time. But now I have Starlit Mantle. And this might change things. Depends on how much removal they have, because that's the third removal card already. Fourth if you count the one I milled. And there's number five. Is that almost all of what your deck is made up of? Because we're gonna risk it. This is all we got left, basically. And he, has, he has like nothing but removal. I'm already reduced to top decking. What are we waiting for? Come on.
I was thinking of doing a uh, parody song from Queen's We Will Rock You to the Flash deck. We will, we will flash you. But I thought there might be too confusion and it would probably take too long to explain the Magic the Gathering connection, so I canceled that project. Why are you waiting? You're the one who's destroying my creature. It, yeah, you have the priority there. Okay, he's killed me with everything because he's got just one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven removals. We'll just keep that till later. Come on. Why is the. He's got something that's holding up priority. Something he has to think about each time. Simplest thing is bring down Murderous Rider. Bastion. If you're tapped out, that means I'm safe. For at least one turn. He does not have a 60 card deck. He's got like a 100 card deck, so. He overstocked with removal spells, it looks like, trying to account for everything. But where's the rest of your land? And why would you do Dragon's Approach now instead of putting down Murderous Right? Okay, you're tapped out. What is left for you to do? <laughs> I see. Evidently, he spent his arsenal and what was left, uh, he was not confident of. So, all right, we'll end, uh, we'll end this demonstration with a uh, record of three to two. Uh, this kind of shows you guys. Uh, I think most of what we've been doing with these demonstration decks has been pretty good. Most of them have been wins that we've shown because the losses have been boring. They're just like places where I didn't get enough land to do anything. Or uh, got flooded with seven, eight lands in a row, and my opponent got three or four spells instead of lands. Uh, but I do want to make sure to show you the losses because I don't want to mislead you. Um, our, our record's probably the same as anybody else out there. You know, we've got a slightly winning percentage, and we, we climb the ladders as bit by bit, putting in the hard work every day. Uh, and if you like the hard work we're putting in for these videos, hit the like and subscribe button, and we'll catch you next time. Have a good one.